From years of anxiety to warrior and mentor, Bradley Robinson created the Anxiety Project to help you end your anxiety naturally. Let's mold the new you and let's end anxiety together. Hello and welcome back to the Anxiety Project Podcast. I am Brad Robinson. Welcome to episode number 127. I'm talking about an addiction I had. Well, the first addiction I overcame and why you must overcome a challenge that you're currently struggling with or grappling with so that you build on that self-respect and thus you are more willing and eager to tackle another challenge and you're more willing to tackle the negatives that life inevitably throws our way. But before I get into this podcast, I want to go over your comments on last week's episode 126. And I talked about bitterness and resentfulness and the way out of that and where bitterness and resentfulness can lead you. So a really powerful episode. And I talk about those topics with the Cain and Abel story and why that story is so powerful a June D leaves a comment saying, never would I have known how relatable that story is towards my own life. Real insightful episode. I went back and re-listened. Thank you, June, for your comment. A Jeremy says, could you interpret more stories like this? I find that when you tell the story, I can visualize and relate to it much better Thanks for the episode. Thank you, Jeremy, for your comment. And yes, I do love these stories because they they speak to us in in some way. and, And that's because there are underlying structures and important psychological components to the stories that resonate with us. And like the Cain and Abel story, we, you know, we love stories because certain stories tell us how to act in the world. And we need to know how to act in the world. How do we act in the world so that we get the best possible outcome? A Leo M says, this episode really hit home with me today. When you begin to speak honestly to yourself, then all of those daily habits that you know to be wrong come forth. Then it's about sacrificing them so the future you could be better powerful. I couldn't have said it better myself, Leo. Thanks for your comment. And what you said there relates and links to this week's episode. And so... It's about sacrifice, and I'm talking about my sacrificing of my first addiction that I overcame, which was coffee. I loved coffee. It was part of who I was, and I would get a coffee two, three times a day, once in the morning, two cream, two sugar, once in the evening at least, two cream, two sugar, and then one during the day, or at least two more during the day. I remember working at my editing job in the past where I would have coffees throughout the day. And coffee was a big part of my life. And I knew when I was going through my anxiety disorder that coffee was contributing a lot to how I was feeling, to my anxiety. And so when I was willing to become more honest with myself, the more awareness I had over what I was doing daily that was contributing to the state I was in, so the anxiety I was in. And from the mentors I was and still am looking up to, I learned about the typical habits of someone with anxiety and what contributes to anxiety. So one of the lessons that I learned from one of the mentors I was looking up to was reduce coffee, reduce stimuli. If your anxiety systems are 
fueling you 24 seven, reducing that fuel is really important for reducing your sympathetic nervous system, which is your anxiety response. And I could have had a set mindset too. I could have, I could have had a set mindset. I could have said, you know, I, I like the way I am. I'm happy where I am. I'm happy the way that I am. But I was willing to do what I had to in order to get out of the pain I was in. I attached so much pain to the old Brad that it drove me forward. I used anxiety to drive me forward to become somebody new. And so I was beginning to develop this developing mindset, a mindset that I I know to be the most powerful, where life is all about constant, never-ending improvement. And I see all the time people who support their set mindset with their self-talk. They say, I'm never going to give this thing up. It's all I have. There's no way. I am who I am. I'll always be like this. I couldn't do that. I won't do that. Something well practiced for a long time, like a habit or even thought patterns, becomes a part of who you are. It becomes a part of your identity. Even though you feel like that certain thing is not contributing to the negative aspects of your life, you don't know life without that thing. So coffee, life with coffee for me was my normal, right? And so let's go over addiction. Addiction is when you attempt to stop something, but you can't. It pulls you, something that controls you. And then you make excuses why you should keep doing it. And then you do the thing and those excuses, or you can also look at it as lies, they get stronger because the reward from that coffee supports the circuits that are the excuses you made or the lies that you told. And those circuits get stronger and stronger. And so you believe those thoughts, you believe those excuses. You think it's the right thing to do, but, and you've built up those beliefs over a long period of time. You've practiced those beliefs. And so I, I first tackled my coffee addiction because, well, first of all, like I said, the, one of the mentors I was looking up to said coffee fuels anxiety. So that made me realize, okay, this is something that I know I should do. And, and I, I should see what would happen, right? The curiosity that this challenge entails. I knew that this was going to be a big battle of mine because coffee was became part of my dependent personality. I was dependent upon it to feel good. It was something that I look forward to. It was something that woke me up in the day. <clears throat> it was something that stimulated me. And... Also, part of it has to do with the sugar I put into the coffee as well, which that sugar addiction I later tackled uh, a couple of years down the road. But I know coffee isn't bad for you, but the honesty that I communicated with myself concluded it would be best for me that I stopped drinking it. And it was like weed for me. A lot of people benefit from weed. I see a lot of successful people who smoke weed all the time and, and, and make amazing content and are very creative people. I had to be honest with myself with weed and say, <clears throat> you know, I pr procrastinate when I smoke weed. I eat a lot of junk food when I smoke weed. I stay up later than usual when I smoke weed. I get 
extremely paranoid when I smoke weed. I get some depressing thoughts and I that I can't seem to control when I smoke weed. So I had to be honest with myself when I was also overcoming weed that it wasn't good for me. And you have to be aware of that with yourself. And I didn't know a life without weed as well. So that was something new that I had to overcome and and also experience, right? And so to begin... And, and coffee was the first big thing in my life that I was trying to overcome, that this big addiction. So I started to decrease my caffeine intake by getting half caffeine, half decaf at the coffee shop, a medium, a medium size like I would usually get. And then I would go half caffeine, half decaf, small, and then reduce the, the amount I would drink in the, in the day, maybe from three to two. And then I would go to decaf completely. And I know decaf has some caffeine, but decaf had a huge benefit over, over how I was feeling. And I felt like I accomplished something beyond myself. I started to become proud of telling other people, I, I don't drink coffee anymore. Everybody knew Brad, the coffee drinker, Brad got his coffee, my parents, my relationships. And I was wearing that accomplishment like a badge on my, on my, on my shoulder, on my chest. I did something for myself, something that was difficult. I didn't set the bar too high either. I set the bar low enough so that it's something that I can attain. Like looking back at it now, I think, well, that was such a small addiction I overcame. But at the time, it was a mountain. It was Mount Everest. It was a huge dragon of mine. It, coffee was something that defined my personality. It was something that was habitual. And to break any habit requires a lot of perseverance through that cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is feeling, thinking, and behaving in a manner you're not accustomed to. So I wasn't accustomed to having no caffeine or no coffee. And that was that resistance I had to face. And this addiction lasted for more than five years. And I had to suffer through those withdrawal symptoms as I decreased my caffeine. So I would get those caffeine cravings. I would get the headaches. And it's when I noticed the change I had, it had, the caffeine had over my day to day that I began to know I was on the right path. So it was those changes of mental clarity or even the more energy that I would experience in the mornings without going for that cup of coffee first thing, I knew that this there was something to this, right? And that's the thing with overcoming an addiction. You have to see the other side of the thing. You can't just sit there. Well, you can, like my old self. I would sit there and assume that, you know, there's no benefit to that. My life is going to be worse without that thing, so why quit? But there's this other side of the coin, this other perspective of, of life without that thing. And life without that thing could be better. You could feel better, right? And then because I overcame caffeine, I felt my own self-respect grow. And then I became more willing to challenge myself to something else, something that is controlling me, right? So that would be weed or, or it could have been pornography or it could have been, which, which it was. And then it was uh, food, junk food, carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, uh, sugar. And so, but it all started with caffeine. It all started with coffee. And so that's why it's important to set the bar low enough, set the bar low enough so that you can overcome that 
thing. And in the end, you gain the confidence to tackle an even bigger challenge, right? You see life without the thing. You feel proud of yourself for overcoming that obstacle. You get the dopamine kick and that dopamine kick will lure you into another challenge because you want to feel that dopamine kick again. You want to feel proud of yourself. You want to gain that self-respect. And and then you start to think you are more than you are and ever thought you could be. And also, I recommend that you tell others what you are overcoming. Tell other people you're overcoming coffee. You're overcoming pornography. You're overcoming weed, alcohol. You're overcoming Googling your symptoms. You're overcoming reassurance seeking. You're overcoming your dependence on YouTube or, or Netflix. Tell other people what you're overcoming and, and why it was a problem for you. The benefits of not doing the thing. Right. And that's speaking not only to other people, but you're really speaking to your unconscious mind when you say that. If you keep referring to yourself as somebody who used to do that thing, you're disassociating yourself more from that thing the more you say it. Right. And I say to other people, I used to be addicted to pornography. And I say that with no shame or guilt because I fully overcame that addiction. I am fully disassociated from that addiction. Maybe if you're not so much disassociated from that addiction, you will feel that shame. You, You might feel that uneasiness within you, but I can come out and tell people what I overcame with confidence because I actually overcame it and I don't engage in that thing anymore. So the more you tell people, you know, this is what I'm really overcoming. This is what was a problem for me. I no longer want to be associated with that habit. I no longer want to do and engage in that habit. I want to be this type of person. You're, you're working those circuits in your mind and you're disassociating yourself from the old you, which is really important. And that helps you to cement the path you are on as well. And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's podcast episode. I hope this podcast has helped you recognize Maybe there's a challenge in your life and really tell yourself or ask yourself with meaning, is there something I'm doing every day that I'm not proud of that I know I want to stop, but I can't seem to stop? Ask yourself that alone, no distractions, just speak that to your, ask yourself that question and I'm sure a answer will emerge from your unconscious. Thank you for being here. If you have any questions, please uh, send me those questions at unpluganxiety.com. I'll answer those because I have a another Q&A podcast episode coming up. So if you want your question answered, just send me a message or if you're listening to this on YouTube, leave a comment below, leave a question below. And lastly, do not let anxiety define who you are. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel, uh, the, uh, The Anxiety Project, and follow along because I post videos weekly. I post the podcast up there weekly, and sometimes I'll post a meditation video as well. I will see you on the next podcast episode or video. Bye for now. project program is downloadable and puts the power of anxiety recovery in your own hands. What are you waiting for? Visit unpluganxiety.com for more details. 
Recovery starts now.